So dear ACCA family, today we have a very special guest who is associated with ACCA from the time even most of you were not born yet and I guess I was about to start my school journey. She is the witness of evolution in ACCA from 90s till now and her story of growth is motivation for me as well as future ACCA finance accounting professional around the globe and especially in India. So let's welcome our special guest today, Ms. Roshni Nair, ma'am, who is working as AVP at Dushi Bank and she is holder of multiple qualifications like ACCA, CPA, Canada, CGA and so on. So welcome, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pallak. You are really How kind you? with the words <laughs> of introduction. How are you, ma'am? It's a privilege to connect with you because I've seen, I've been following you, the way you are uh, helping the ACCA students to finish their exams and, you know, coming up in flying colors. I really appreciate all the effort that you're rendering to develop a very strong ACC community in India. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, ma'am. And special thank you for your valuable time. Uh, like we tried to connect many times, but uh, because of, you know, I, I truly understand that, yes, due to our busy schedule and the way you are uh, supporting ACCA community, being an ACCA advocate, like a routine purpose meeting, but you spare your time for me. Thanks a lot. So, ma'am, uh, like today, uh, I... Um, you know, please to ask you certain queries and these queries are uh, from the students around the globe and we want to know about your journey and like uh, some questions regarding ACC and the way you are working. So shall I? Please go ahead. <laughs> so please yes, ma'am. Our first question is your journey to become AVP of the bank. <laughs> okay. Now, that's a very good question to start our podcast. Thank you very much for the question. Well, I didn't plan to become an AVP as such, but uh, I did plan to work in banking industry or financial services industry for that sake. Um, at the start of the uh, career, I was very keen on getting my hands-on exposure and experience, not expertise, because expertise need a lot of years of commitment. But I was very keen on getting hands-on experience and a bit of exposure in various towers of finance. Um, when I say various towers of finance in the corporate world, we have uh, the receipt section or what they call as R2R and the payment section, which they call as P2P. And then there is cash application and order to cash. All, all those major towers. I was very keen on getting my ex exposure over there. And then it led to financial advisory like where we advise our clients on how much to invest or which area to invest and so on and so forth. And the last part, which I was very keen on getting my um, experience was in the compliance part, the risk and compliance. So now by the time I cross my initial five to six years of my uh, career starting journey, I was able to get the exp like experience in all these areas. And from there, what I... Um, what I did was I realized that my strong point was in audit. So next step was getting into an audit profile. And uh, at that time, Wells Fargo came along and there was an opening in Wells Fargo. That role was majorly into a, um, kind of a bridge between process and audit. So when I say bridge between process and audit, I was able to... Um, render my services there because I already had experience in both sides of the table. When I say both sides of the table, in operations side and the compliance side, like the audit side. So with that exposure, I was able to handle that role. And then as part of my career growth, uh, then I moved to Deutsche Bank where I'm currently employed, majorly into setting up controls for risk mitigation purposes. So that's where I am now. And that's my journey in a in like a snapshot, as you can say. Wow. So, uh, ma'am, uh, our next question is like, how the work is being done at that bank? Like, what is your, basically the role? Okay. So, currently, my job is into setting up internal control. So, 
what we majorly do over there is we will do a process review and see if there is if the existing controls are good enough to have a um, adequate risk mitigation is it's happening or not with the uh, set already set controls. If we identify any gaps, we will be suggesting any additional controls. Additional controls may come as uh, preventive controls or digital controls. So, in one line, that's my job with Deutsche Bank. Okay, so basically the theoretical portion of the you know the syllabus area which we are covering in ACC syllabus, you are doing that work. Very much, very much, because everything comes from the theoretical knowledge that we gain from ACC yeah. studies. There is nothing new. Only thing which will be added on in our career journey is industry specific. Some jargons may be there. They, the process basically everything is same. Regulations may be different based on country variant and um, the periodicity that they do a review will be different. The rest, everything is the same. And in DB, um, the journey so far has been really exciting. And every day is a new day and there is a lot of opportunities for learning. So that's DB for me so far. Deutsche Bank for me so far. Great, great. So now as you are an ACC member and again ACC advocate and very renowned personality of ACC world. So like how ACC have helped you in your professional journey and what are the benefits to you for achieving like, you know, you have achieved ACC membership as well. So what are the benefits? Because you are holder of multiple qualifications. So what is the contribution of ACC in your professional group? Well, I thank ACC for everything that I have achieved in my professional journey. Because everything right from the scratch, it was possible only because of ACC and the quality and the knowledge which ACCA has rendered me. Now, when I look at the benefits which I personally have got is as I mentioned, knowledge base. Very strong exposure to a varied fields. Accounting, finance, audit, taxation, strategic management. You name it, we have it. So that was the first step that ACC helped me with. So once we have, we are equipped with a very strong knowledge base. Next step is getting a practical uh, exposure to it. So by having the strong knowledge base, it helped me to get practical knowledge in everything which ACC had taught me, which was in a way a very conscious decision. After that, another part which ACC helped me is, as you mentioned, multiple or additional qualifications. This is possible. This has made my journey even easier because we, once we become a member of ACCA, we will be able to add on additional qualifications from various countries. We can, uh, ACCA help us to get qualifications, Canadian qualifications, CPA, and um, which I was uh, blessed to take, CPA Canada, which I took. And then recently I have something called AIFA and MIPA. That's, MIPA is the um, Australian one. So this is all possible only because of ACCA. So two benefits. I would rather say three benefits. One, knowledge, which ACCA rendered. Two, additional qualifications which we can add because once you become an ACCA it's another journey has started you should always be open for learning because unless you are open for learning you will not be able to have the continuous development and stay updated in the um, in the career or the industry where you're working and third which is a major part is ethical behavior and the importance that ACC will give for, and it is still giving for ethical behavior that we should carry in our professional journey. Um, from earning the membership, now the members need to take EPS the module, isn't yeah, it? EPS. So even after you clear all your uh, papers, study papers, it is still giving you additional exposure or rendering you the importance or telling you the importance of insisting and continuing to behave in an ethical manner wherever we go. So I would say three benefits. Wherever I am, it's totally ACCA, knowledge, um, practical exposure, and also me as a person, I would rather say ethical behavior help, help me to, to change me as a person as well the way I look at my professional journey and my personal journey. So that's all the benefits of ACCA for me. Very well said. Very well said. So ma'am, uh, like, 
as you are in this position so what kind of roles and challenging which you are facing right now um the role i would generalize it as a mid senior level so anybody who will reach and in their at one one point in their career they will reach a mid senior level so at mid senior level what happens is you will not have anyone to overlook your work whatever you say whatever you when i say say if you are in advisory if you are suggesting your client to uh, about any investment or anything for that matter any financial advising that you are doing if you are in audit if you are putting a report in front of the management your the audit report that you give the financial advisory all this this will not be a second eye looking at it second pair of eyes not being that checking will not be happening so you are responsible for whatever you say in whatever times you say like you may be um committing to the management that okay in three uh, when i look at the audit perspective in three months time i'm going to finish our review of this particular process so come third month i should be able to provide a report to the management of any any uh, outcome of the review which i have done so nobody is going to question you even at the end of the mid of the two and a half months like uh, is it done how where are we so that kind of questions may not happen at a mid senior level so it is totally up to you so the responsibility is on you to keep the management updated and the uh, authority that comes from it you should be very sure about what you what you share with the management as i mentioned earlier advisory may may be advisory may be an audit report so the responsibility is totally on you and great partners are a very uh, positive partners the independence that you will enjoy so independence comes with extra responsibility as well yeah. to uh, to show your integrity and commitment to the work so at any mid senior level so these are the cha- rather than challenges i would say these are the factors that we will be um, enjoying at that level i try to look at it in a very positive way so again you know like uh, uh, because i teach sbl as well so uh, the, the same concept is being followed there account- accountability authority responsibility so the p- practical application and i feel that and i have heard that is uh, somehow the acca curriculum is quite similar to the uh, work which is being done in the industry very much whatever we learn theory we are getting it from acca and in the real world we are applying it in any area that you are taxation audit finance advisory anything for that matter so that means uh, like uh, the uh, like the work process because see you were part of you know multiple qualification and you are the holder of multiple qualifications so like uh, according to you the uh, curriculum of acca is more uh, like compatible to the other you know areas of industry as compared to other bodies because see you are professional i am professional and we are not uh, going to degrade any you know body obviously but uh, i i feel that uh, because according to your wording uh, whatever you are doing is part of acca curriculum only yes very much very much so when when i say i because i have got exposure only to acca so i feel that whatever acca is teaching us that's exactly that what what i do at work at different levels of my career journey that's exactly what i did just a practical experience which i'm getting from there okay so now uh, the next question and i guess most favorite question of most of the student what student should do to get hired into your company and your organization okay let's <laughs> let's generalize it a bit rather than getting hired to any specific employer let's see what a uh, a fresh graduate let's let's look at that way let a fresh graduate should do to get employed with any um, any employer for that matter or any corporate for that matter so it's multi level first to start with anyway it's the knowledge base which acc is very much taking care of it by the time you finish your papers you are you are be, you will have a very strong knowledge on the all the areas that acc syllabus is covering so that's been taken care of then what i always suggest students and which consciously i uh, the way i plan my career because i can i can put only myself as an example of how i traveled during my career journey so during the initial years what i would always suggest the student or fresh graduates let's put it that way fresh graduate is 
in the um, the PER, when we ask any student how many PERs are or any affiliates, how many PERs are there, they will all, very well, without even thinking for a moment, they will say it's nine. But I would rather look at it as totally 22, if I'm not wrong, right? Five uh, of the mandates. 17. And 17 total right now. Uh, yeah. yeah, 17 plus five, right? No, like, 17, uh, like so five it. are the part of that, yeah. Okay, so the whole of the PR, ensure that you're getting a taste, a practical taste of all those PR yeah. areas. The reason is, you will never know where your strong point is unless you get a taste of it. You may not be strong when you are studying taxation for your exams, your, when you are uh, finishing your mock exam or ACC exams for that matter. But once you get a chance at any, even if you are in your internship or article shape for that matter, if you get if you get a chance to get into the tax department, maybe it is a very small initiative. If you are offered an offered an opportunity, I would say even if you felt that during ACC exam you are not strong in your tax paper, give it a shot. What if you you get the hang of tax and you feel that tax is your strong area? So unless and until you get a taste of all those PR areas where ACC is suggesting, you will, in my opinion, you will not be able to gauge your strong points or your strong areas or where you want to excel in your career. So that's something which I always advise. That is during the initial stages of their career. So once you get a taste of all that, you, you, you may be able to gauge where you want to actually um, lead your profile or you want to stick your audit profile or taxation profile or advisory, anything for that matter. So once that part is taken care of, next what I would suggest everyone is, which I also uh, did was, get into, try to get experience in different industries. So when I say different industry, um, it may be fashion industry, it may be pharma, it may be financial services, it can be BWS, like beer, wine, spirit, anything for FMCG, fast moving consumer goods. Try to get an experience in all those industries. The reason is the way each client works is different. End of the day, debit board comes in, credit board goes out. There's no change. But there is a way things happen in every industry. To, to cover that part, what I did during my career journey was I got into a BPO. So in BPO, what happens is they will have varied clients and you can move in, you know, within the organization. Moving within the organization, it's a very, uh, very good decision. The reason why I say good decision is you will have stability in your resume. Stability in resume is also very much needed in career growth. Yeah. If you, if your resume shows that you are jumping your career in every, uh, in jumping your employer in every one and a half two years, it may not show that great, uh, in, great picture yeah. about you. So try to have a stability. So for you to get a stability in your resume, plus varied client exposure. So client, when I say client, varied industry, like fashion industry or BWS or FMCG, pharma, anything for that matter. And also different covers, which I was mentioning early, receipt section, um, process, payment process, cash application. All this will be covered for me when I joined the BPO industry. So for any new or any fresh graduate who comes to me, like how, um, how I reach where I am today. This is a journey which I took. It was kind of a conscious decision. So yeah, this is the advice which I have got to tell or which I would re request everyone to follow unless and until we do a self-SWOT analysis. Yeah. We will not be able to yeah. say where we have to develop, isn't it? Strong points, covered. Weakness, we need to learn. Be open for learning all the time in your career at any level that you are be open for learning so that's what i've got to tell the fresh graduates and and uh, see i have been following you uh, on linkedin and other social media so i have seen on your linkedin as well that yes recently you also completed uh, some certification and i knew that that yes you are continuously believing in learning something new and see, uh, that is very motivating because I remember my time when I finished my ACCA qualification, I was just like, okay, ACCA done, now shut down the books. 
but yeah thankfully i i am into that profession that every day now i have to <laughs> open books even for teaching but yes i have to open books but uh, and that you know that thing because uh, like recently i saw your post that yes you have completed one of the qualification and that day i decided okay i will be doing one more <laughs> so this is kind <laughs> of motivation we get <laughs> and uh, and i am into like okay now i am deciding which qualification i should be starting now <laughs> and acc will give us a lot of opportunities that way because once you are an acc a member a lot of your knowledge is already sorted it's all tested yeah. so then you just need to add on something new to it maybe an extra country variant maybe yeah. um maybe a tax thing i i don't know i'm just putting an example so that will give you another qualification and every time you get a qualification it's like your brain is working and yeah, it's right. learning the absorption it's happening the knowledge is getting added and only if you keep on act, like you know keep your brain active you won't be able to grow because the career yeah. growth is something which we always um, dream about so that will happen only if you learn all the time yeah and uh, that the, this, this thing you know i have you know heard from uh, you know various people and uh, like uh, some motivational gurus as well that yeah, they used to mention that uh, every day like you should read at least five uh, five pages a day and i am trying uh, obviously uh, on a daily basis i am you know teaching and uh, like reading books but apart from that i am trying to you know learn something new from different books and uh, just learning from people like you thank you and uh, to the fresh graduates one more thing which i want to say uh, mainly about learning when you in your corporate world in your corporate role when you learn new things you you need to you need to always continuously learn new things and aspire for growth when i say growth in career it may just not be the vertical growth can can be lateral growth as well but always be open for that that growth mentality should be there for you or as you will get stuck in one place and if you get stuck in one place what will what will you do with all the knowledge that acc has given you use them flaunt it yeah and grow in your career very well said now uh, ma'am our next question is can you share some uh, you know insight or risk in banking sector and how to mitigate them in journal practice yeah so sure. that, that's very nice well, good question very much a uh, part of what i do on a daily basis now <laughs> all right so in uh, when we look at risk the different type of risk in the banking industry it's i i would categorize for the uh, risk type learning purpose as reputational risk credit risk operational risk and liquidity risk so that's for the different types of risk that we look at now when when we come to a risk mitigation part or from an audit perspective i always categorize under two heads so when i say two heads one is the compliance risk and another one is the transactional risk so when i when i say compliance risk that covers a lot of areas so when i say lot of areas it covers reputational risk financial risk everything is getting covered in this kind of all inclusive now we look at how we can mitigate that that reputational or the compliance risk it's very easy i would say the reason is we will look at do an rca like a root cause analysis why would do we have a compliance risk it because we didn't follow some compliance which was yeah. supposed to be followed by the client that uh, we are reviewing well like, let's put it that way i'm reviewing a client and i see there's a compliance risk how did it happen the client was supposed to follow some compliance procedures or regulations which it was supposed to follow and it didn't follow and that's that's how yeah. the risk happened yeah how can we mitigate it simple follow the regulations so in any industry in banking industry specifically always ensure that the client is following all the regulations which is specific for the industry for the market they are they are functioning for the country they are functioning and also for the product they are dealing with so ensure that it's the client is following it and how can we ensure that the client is following all the regulations you need to be updated the client should be updated about it now if you are part of an indian authority it's a bit of your responsibility as well to keep the management updated about the changes that's happening so that you as an indian authority 
can suggest controls to set in place to mitigate any risk that's happening. Okay. The main reason that we need as auditors, we need to be updated about the regulations that are happening in whichever industry they are working is the age-old rule that we learned in business law. Ignorantia juris non excusat. Ignorance of law is not is never an excuse. Yeah. So it's up to you to keep yourself updated about all the latest regulations that your client is supposed to follow. Okay, so the compliance risk, how we can mitigate it, I, I just explained. Now we'll come to the transactional risk. Transactional risk, it's, it's even easy to mitigate because we just need to follow some thumb rules. One, for any transaction, how it should be performed. There should be a very detailed, updated documentation. It should be available to everyone who's working in that process or, or anyone and everyone who's linked upstream or downstream to that transaction. Second is, have a maker checker in place. Simple, one person is making, another person is checking. If another extra pair of eyes is always good. So either it's called a maker checker process or it's a four eye. So have that in place. One person making it, one person checking it. Next is a very much um, important thing which I always suggest in any review that I conduct. It's an input output control. That is in the current corporate world, everything is getting like transactions, processing. And everything will have a timeline. So if you have a control over what's coming in, what's going out of your bucket, that is 10 coming in, 5 going out, or 7 going out, then you have a control over that 3. What's happening to that 3? That kind of input-output control should be there in the, in the process. So that will also, that in that way, what happens is the risk of missing anything is getting control, kind of a preventive control. Then what I would always suggest is, periodical review of what we are actually doing in the process. Is there anything new happening? If there is anything new happening, is the people who are actually working on it properly trained? So periodical refresher training for everyone who is engaged in that transaction, again, upstream, downstream. So when we have all this, all this in place, controls in place, like have an updated documentation, ensure that everyone are trained in it, and have a four eye or a make a checker. It's kind of a preventive control. So that will eliminate a big chunk of your transactional risk. So now in banking, as I was earlier mentioned, different types of risk, but categorized into two parts. And now we have looked at how we can mitigate that. So that's it, sorted. So again, you know, uh, like the combination of auditing AAA because yeah. I was a AAA student and the audit was every time, you know, close to my heart. And, uh, you know, uh, like when I was appearing for auditing paper, everyone mentioned that like uh, uh, like it's having the least pass percentage. So you should not do that. But I know that that yes, audit is having scope. And uh, like what I am hearing from you now. Yeah, and um, when it comes to financial services, what I would always suggest as a preventive control is there should be segregation of duties. One person, if it's a payment section we are looking yeah. at, one person making the payment and another person approving it. There should be segregation of duties. The yeah. same person should not be doing it. And also, we can always set, well, mainly in the, uh, in the payments, we can always set an approval limit. Like manager will have this limit to approve uh, deputy manager will have another limit, you know, like, like different yeah. levels, approval limits yeah. to be set. Like up to 10 so lakhs also... without approval and up more than that, you need to get approval from the senior persons. Exactly, exactly. So in that way, we are covering major chunk, which we can predict whatever risk we are assuming can happen or make gaps that can happen in the banking industry, that will get covered. But then also in real-time scenario, we may need to put some um, detective controls as well. After once you detect any gap, then we'll have a detective control in place. Whatever preventive control we can do, we will put. So that's the that's how the risks are identified, and that's how we try to mitigate the risk in the in the banking industry or any any um, review process for that matter. I I don't want to say this is how banking industry works. This is how any any uh, process 
reviews. This is how we we'll, we should be. Uh, the process which we should be following. I'll just put it simply in that way. Okay. So. So now, ma'am, as you are working at the mid senior position and hoping, uh, you know, in the executive position very soon. So, uh, any interview related tips for our students? That's my favorite topic. <laughs> <laughs> I can talk for us. <laughs> we will love to hear that. <laughs> right. Uh, interviews. So before I start the interview part, I would like to take one step back. Okay, let's look at the, before the interview, what happens is the resume. What we have seen is copy-paste uh, resumes coming to us. You, that will give a very wrong impression about the person. You never know, is it A copied from B or B copied from B? So both of them will be in trouble. And another part, what will happen is, where, where, when you copy a resume from another person, where did that integrity part which HBCA taught us, where, where has it gone? Yeah. Okay, so be very careful about the resume that you are sending to any prospective uh, recruiter or employer for that matter. In the resume, you should always put and you should only put what you actually know and what you actually learned. If you are at any specific level of HBCA studies or HBCA member journey, be very clear about it. And the employee will always appreciate that, you know, your, whatever you tell in the resume is transparent. The reason yeah. is, whatever you put in the resume will be asked in the interview. Left, right, center, everything that you put in the resume will be questioned in the interview. Because before the interviewer see you as a person, the only thing, if I could take an example, if uh, Palak is interviewing Roshni, the first thing which Pilot got is Ros Roshni's resume before Pilot sees Roshni. So the resume is talking for Roshni. Then only Roshni as a person will come into the picture. So at that time, definitely Pilot will want to know whatever Roshni wrote, wrote in the resume is right or not. Isn't it? Yeah. So be very, very careful about what you write in the resume. And because everything will be judged. IFRS, or audit standards, everything will be checked. Your knowledge will be checked. Now we will come to the interview part. Nowadays, we have seen that interviews are becoming um, offline. Maybe the start, the first screening may happen in online, but then it will be offline. Yeah. So we'll first look at the offline interviews, which I see that the Gen Z is not that um, aware of because they have been taking all the online interviews. Let's assume that way. So now coming to offline interview. Reach the venue of your interview at least 30 minutes before the scheduled time. There is multiple reasons for that. One, you will, once you reach that place, you will, you will get accustomed with the environment that will increase your confidence. Because in offline, they are actually seeing your body language. Online, they will only see one half of it. Yeah. In offline, they are seeing your body and your body will talk. If you're confident, it will reflect in your body language. So try to reach the place half an hour, 30 minutes early. Get accustomed to the environment. And then you can wait for the interview board to call you. Second thing which I would always suggest is, one part of it is dressing professionally, which the ACCA students, fresh graduates, affiliates, any, anyone for that matter, they, they are very immaculate. There's nothing to worry. Another part which I want to add is dress comfortably. Just that you are professionally dressed doesn't, doesn't add on. You should be comfortable in whatever you wear. Maybe it's uh, your food wear. Maybe it's whatever you're wearing. Be comfortable in it. Yes. Because unless you're comfortable, you will not be able to put your maximum or your uh, all your effort or concentration in the interview or the questions being asked. So offline interview, Early reaching, be comfortable in whatever you wear. And last is always carry two to three copies of your resume. Your resume have already reached the interview board. They are very much happy or convinced about whatever is put in the resume. That's why they have called you for a face-to-face -face interview. So 
you may think that why should I get the uh, resume with me? They already have it. Yes, they already have it. But what's what's the damage in carrying two, three copies? They may be taking interviews of five, ten people. There may yeah. be more than one Roshni in front of them. So let's not give them the... Uh, let, let's make it easy for them. Let's give hand over a copy of a resume. Usually, if they ask, there will be two or three people in the board and don't expect them to share one resume. Always carry two to three copies. It will show that you are ready to face the interview board. That will show your confidence and preparedness. And that will always gain brownie points. So that's the offline part. Now we'll come to the online part. Interviews, interview tips for online. First thing is 30 minutes before that, check the link that you got. That can be in a technical glitch. It's We, we stay in a very um, not that perfect world. That can be technical glitch. Sort yeah. it out. That's why you are taking the 30 minute buffer. And 15 minutes before the scheduled time, join the call and wait. There is nothing harm in it. Join the yeah. call and wait. When you join the call, ensure your video is on so they will. you can check your background. And look for a place where there is minimal disturbance. So, rest all covered. You just need to concentrate on the interview questions and you know perform it in the best way possible. So that's part of the online. And in online also, ensure that you're dressing in the most professional way. In yeah. online, what happens yeah. is you may need not have to um, have any copies of your resume handy, but always have your resume in front of you for reference because they are going to ask every question from the resume. Maybe you, maybe you had, uh, let's look at, um, let's assume we are interviewing a person who is having the fifth job jump. He may not remember what he did in his first job, but the um, interviewer will because he got the resume in front of you. So if the interviewer is asking something which you did five years back and you say like, I don't remember, that's not a good yeah. sign. So have the uh, copy of your resume opened in front of you. And one thing which I want to tell the fresh graduates, mainly the fresh graduates, always remember that the interviewer is not looking for all the right answers from you. Yeah, a lot of right answers related to knowledge, definitely yes. But when it comes to scenario analysis, they are looking for your will. Are you open for learning? Are you open to are you a risk averse or a risk taker? So there may be questions which you don't know. When you are when you are an already experienced person, now you are getting a scenario analysis. And if the scenario which the interviewer is saying is something which you have never, never come across in your practical uh, journey, you can always tell the interviewer, I have never um, faced that kind of a situation, but I would like to give it a go based on my knowledge. Shall I? This yeah. will always, this approach will always be appreciated. And when it comes to fresh graduates, you can always tell the interviewer that um, I want to give it a shot depending on, based on my knowledge. So shall I try this question based on it? So they will always appreciate it because they are never looking for a, all the right answers. As I mentioned early, your will is also being checked. Your skill is being checked for Confident. sure, your knowledge. But then, yes, the confidence and your openness to take suggestions and feedback that is also being checked in the interview how you present yourself are you able to appreciate or uh, are you able, are you confident to tell the interview board that yes i don't know that but i'm open to learn if you train me i'm open to get trained so that is also getting checked so that's the major interview tips which i have for fresh graduates and also the people who are experienced See, all, all the things which you have mentioned remind me some of the incident. I, I just would like to highlight one of the most important incident, uh, like not faking. And I referred one of my student uh, because uh, I am actively involved in uh, making people, uh, you know, aware about jobs and trying to get their jobs. So I have also created a job community. And uh, from that, I, you know, uh, like I, I, you know, sent resume of one of my student uh, to an employer. And based upon, you know, my goodwill, uh, he conducted the interview. 
And uh, before the interview, the student uh, mentioned me, ma'am, that what kind of work is being done in that specific industry. I don't want to mention the name of company. The you know the people will judge that, and the student will judge that that it's about me. So what happened that uh, like I told her that yes, uh, like zero. QuickBook, these types of software are being done. So you should have some, you know, like knowledge, like, yes, how the process is being done. So you can watch all the things on YouTube. Just as journal, I guided her, okay, that yes, the process is available on YouTube. Just for your reference, you can watch the YouTube tutorial. What she did, she uh, like mentioned that in her resume, that expertise in zero <laughs> and QuickBook. Now, she was a fresher. Now the employer is uh, very close to me. He knows me very well. And uh, like, uh, we are just like good friends. So the employer interviewed her and uh, like, he just, you know, called me during that interview session and like, uh, like uh, asked me that he is being on call. The student doesn't know that I was on call. And he said that, okay, you're fresher. She said, yeah. So where you learn your zero? Quick book. It says. So she said, ma'am, uh, sir, uh, like I have, uh, you know, learned these things on YouTube. And the reply interviewer gave to him, her that I can watch the YouTube tutorial for running up a plane and I can be a pilot. So see, students are doing <laughs> this type of things. And you, you know, remind me of that uh, scenario that, yeah, that happened. And, you know, that embarrassed me in front of that employer. <laughs> uh, because, see, we can do the reference part. But how you yeah. represent yourself in front of employer, it's it's you. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. never, 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 ever, you know, you know, fake, you know, show something misleading in, in your CV. That's very important. Very important because, um, you know, nowadays that ACC is booming in India, we should be yeah. very careful about how we present ourselves because yeah. when you go for, like if I, Roshni goes for an interview and uh, do something funny like this, it is not Roshni who's getting judged over there, it's ACC. Yeah. So we should be very careful about how we portray ourselves and also the you know, brand that we are taking ourselves, that is yeah. ACC. So be very careful. Always remember the integrity yeah. part. Yeah, the integrity which ACC has taught us the ethical behavior that we should uphold yeah. all the time. Never forget that at any level of your uh, career journey, always uphold Correct. it. Correct. So as we are discussing about students, so now what skills students should possess in today's dynamic environment? Wow. Okay. The skills which students need. I would add mindset as well, okay? Skills will be, skill and mindset which the students need to uh, get into the corporate, like real world, job world. First is definitely the knowledge, okay? So that is judged and covered by ACC. And you, people like you are ensuring that their knowledge base is really strong, which I really appreciate. And another part which I want to add is the students should be, stay updated about the newer changes that is also in a very very uh, vast way ACC is covering it like newer changes in the in the yeah. uh, in the finance world like ai and climate financing or anything for that matter be updated about what's happening in your in your uh, in your in your forte whatever is happening updates second part is the soft skills they should always be uh, once they qualify what i've seen is they will like me and you, and we, we both have crossed that path. We feel like, okay, studies are over. Shut your brain. So we both learn it the hard way that, no, once you become an ACC, yeah. another journey starts, yes. isn't it? So to my dear uh, fresh graduates and affiliates for that matter, or even students who are going to be fresh graduates, always remember that at whatever level of your journey in ACCA, have an open mind. Have an open mind for learning new things. Have, be open for unlearning and relearning when you switch industries or when you switch your job. Unlearn and relearn. You should never be having that uh, prejudice that, okay, I know that. What's there new to learn? So the moment you get that kind of a feeling up here, uh, try to take it out. Always have an open mind for learning. It will only be good for you. And... Always be open for suggestions. 
and feedback. When it comes to feedback, I would always suggest people not to take it personally, have an impersonal view to it. Because the feedback that you get from your employer for that matter, it's based on how you present yourself in that maybe three months, six months. So the, that, that perspective can always change. So don't take the feedback that you get from your employer on a personal level. Always be open for suggestions. And again, re, um, reinforcing the importance of having an open mind of uh, open mind to learn new things at any level. And the last thing which I want to add, which is very important is have a mindset that you are responsible for everything that you do. And after once you become ACCA, it is a big responsibility on your shoulders because you are the torch bearer of ACCA. Wherever you go, you are the torch bearer. So any, any, any act that you do, any word that you say, it will be kind of taken up by, okay, this is how an ACCA person will behave. This is how an ACCA person will do. And another thing which we... Uh, in the Gen Z, which we see is once they qualify or once they become an affiliate or a member for that matter, they feel that, okay, it's true that you got an international uh, qualification. Very good. You earned it really hard. It was real hard work that enabled you to earn that. Now you have additional responsibility that you should never forget that being an ACCA, and also, ACCA never makes you immune of any regulations or rule applicable to any employer or, or any industry for that matter. All the rules applicable for all the employees in a particular organization is applicable for you as well. Just because you are an ACCA, it doesn't make give you any exemption from any rules. So this is a very important thing which I try to, to convey to any fresh graduates who come my way. You have a responsibility because you have a big, um, a global response, a global professional qualification on your shoulder. So be responsible for any act, any word that comes here or the way you carry yourself. So that's something which we always have to remember. Soft skills and technical skills. So never forget it, please. Very well. And see, ma'am, it's our last question and again, the most important question of today. So, uh, see, you are associated with a ACCA, I guess, from uh, like late 90s or 2000s uh, nearby. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So, yes, uh, what do you see about future of ACCA in a decade? Because, see, you were member since long back then and you have seen ACCA evolving over a period of time. So what do you think about future of ACC and finance in our country? Okay. Future of ACCA. Isn't it in your hands, Palak? <laughs> People you are teaching. You are making a strong knowledge base for all the prospective ACCA members. So future is in your hands. <laughs> all right. So, well, we see that ACC is really booming in India. Yeah. The yeah. reason is... Um, the adaptability that ACCA have shown to ensure that the whatever the student learned, that is the syllabus of ACC is always uh, moving with the trend. That um, I, I think you can always um, correct me if I'm not wrong. The ACC curriculum is covering AI and yeah. um, sustainability, vision, green account, sustainability yeah. climate financing. That's, that's right. So the latest trends is already covered. So adaptability. And another, uh, along with the adaptability to the newer trend is staying relevant to the, to the current world. So ACC is taking care of that as well. And the, what we have always seen with ACC students is they are very much emotionally intelligent. When I say emotionally intelligent, they are very much uh, easily adaptable to newer changes, which is a very great appreciating mental uh, state. And that is also helping ACCA to grow globally. Now it is the competitive edge that we have in the job market. With ACCA, the exposure that the students are having, come maybe it's the knowledge or also the exposure they have once they get the ACCA. They, it's like a global passport 
to yeah. choose wherever you want to work. Keeping me in mind, following all the regulations. Yeah. So because of all this, and uh, as I mentioned, the adaptability and the staying relevant, the ACC syllabus is always staying in relevant. Also the competitive edge, the people have the ACC students, and not the students, the fresh graduates and affiliates have in the market. ACC is de definitely uh, growing globally because so far we have reached 183 countries, if I'm not wrong. Thanks. And from the time I have, yeah. So from the time when I started ACCA, the first time when I was giving the ACCA exam, it was in a small room in the British Library in Chennai. The whole of South India came together and there were not more than 20 students. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking like 20 years back. And now we have, um, just correct me if I'm wrong, not wrong, 44,000 students. Is that, is that the number? More than I'm that. looking at more, more than, than that. that. So look where we are standing now. And it's it's booming because the acceptability of ACTA is increasing. The, the, the member community, the, the acceptability which the ACTA have in different industries. Initially, it was just a big force who were looking for ACTA. Yeah. Uh, but now it's not that. The varied industries are looking for um, ACCA candidates, financial services, the various banks, and um, as I was mentioning earlier, social media, in the social media clients, all of them want ACCA. It's because they they need not have to worry about the knowledge that the ACCA is, ACCA students and the members and any stage of ACCA journey, that, and the value the ACCA people are bringing to the table. And there's no doubt to, the, to that when it comes to the employer. So, they are not having much of an effort when they are recruiting an ACCA person. It's all because of all the uh, ACCA members and employees who are working with the, the in different industries. The value which they have brought to the table, what, what, the way they are performing in different employers, it's all because of that. So ACCA is really booming in India and also globally, and there's no doubt to it. Yeah, if I if I link your po points, uh, because ACCA being adaptable according to the changing in uh, you know technology, see the first example is uh, like uh, like online exams. See after COVID, just ACCA body introduced this, and till now they are conducting remote based exam, like just by sitting at your own comfort zone and wherever you are you are able to appear for your examination. And again, the students adapted it very well. I remember the time because see, now in my last paper, which was APM, the change happened. Because see, uh, uh, that was the uh, COVID time period. So within just two months, because uh, just due to COVID, uh, it was introduced at an early stage. It was about to introduce six months later, but just due, due to COVID, it happened early. So. Students like us, like uh, back then I was a student, so we adapted it very well. And again, now uh, students are able to understand the importance of technology because see, uh, it's again sustainability, not wasting of pen, paper, and again, taking care of Mother Earth and again, making us comfortable with the technology because that is the end thing which we will be using when we will be working. Exactly, and we should uh, we should always uh, remember the effort that's been put by ACCA uh, to increase the acceptability of ACCA globally yeah. and in India yeah. as well. So all the effort that's done by ACCA India and ACCA globally to increase the acceptability and the exposure, they're ensuring that all the ACCA members, affiliates, and students for that matter, and are getting an international exposure. May may be uh, getting work in a different uh, countries or um, maybe adding on additional qualification from various country variant, Canada or Australia or in yeah. the UK for that matter, additional qualifications from UK. And now I think the latest is um, even internal account, in certified internal auditor. They are also- CIE, um, yeah. Exactly, CIE. So they are also accepting um, ACCA members with just additional- That, with, is, that with, is in my bucket right? list actually now. <laughs> Great, that's nice. <laughs> so when we see all this happening in the ACCA world, there is no doubt that we are growing and exponentially yeah. growing. True. So, uh, ma'am, your tips were very valuable and I guess most of the students will 
you know get guidance from whatever you have said and again uh, it it was you know very great pleasure to you have you with me and again for your time and again i learned a lot uh, but every single word whatever you have said so ma'am it was re really you know appreciating that uh, within your busy schedule you spared your time for me thank you so much palak thank you so much for inviting me so through you i am seeing uh, i am like very very confident that the newer generation who is coming up as acca uh, fresh graduates they are very safe in your hands because i i have been following you in social media and i have seen the effort that you are putting in different areas like maybe how to claim a reduced membership fee even you know yeah. there's no area which you haven't touched i really appreciate the effort that you are putting and all the services you are rendering for acca thank you so much and thank you Fine, very much once just, again for inviting me to this interview just learning from you ma'am learning from you and uh, like uh, you know uh, you have been my motivation since because i i get to know about everything and i search about you a lot and i i have you know like uh, like like wherever you have worked like a uh, beat by a ca firm and again banks i have searched every single detail about you and just trying to learn things from you thank you it's a privilege so thank you so much ma'am